All right, so welcome back to Wingspan, the Oceana expansion. And so now we're going to talk about the when activated uh, abilities for these birds. And obviously there's a lot more of these like there always is, right? So let's get started since there's a lot of them here. So the first one here is the Royal Spoonbill, okay? When this one is activated, you'll draw one face-up bird card from the tray with a, a platform nest or a wild nest. You may reset or refill the tray before doing so. So this is only this is contingent on obviously one of those birds with this kind of nest in the tray that would be obviously face-up. If there are no birds face-up, you can at least still reset and refill the tray before doing so. So that's something, right? It increases your possibility of another one of these nests showing up. So that's an interesting ability. And you get to draw one. So if there's more than one, you're still only drawing one. Okay. Now this bird here, which we won't, talk, we won't try to pronounce, um, has the exact same ability as this one, except instead of a platform nest, it is a bowl nest. So... We won't talk any further about that one. This one has the exact same ability as the last two, the Australian shell duck here, but instead of a bull nest or a platform nest, it is a cavity nest. Okay. Okay, so this one has the exact same ability as the last ones, this musk duck, except instead of those types of nests, it's a ground nest instead. Same ability as those. Okay, cool. So those are all those right there. The Rufous Owl. This one is, uh, when activated, you'll draw one face-up uh, bird card from the tray with a wingspan less than 75 centimeters and tuck it behind this bird. Well, that's kind of interesting. You're, you're getting to tuck a bird from the tray behind this bird. That's pretty cool. But it has to be, obviously, 75 centimeters or less, right? So, or should I say it has to be less than 75 centimeters. So that's still cool. Uh, there's some other, maybe there, there, maybe there's one in the tray. Who knows? With uh, less than 75 centimeters. Okay, I'm not even going to bother trying to pronounce this bird. But uh, when this one is activated, you'll tuck the smallest bird in the tray behind this bird. So it, you're basically guaranteed to get something, right? Because you're going to tuck the smallest bird in the tray behind this bird. So whatever happens to be the smallest bird there is going to get tucked behind this bird. So that's interesting. If you decide to use it, of course. Okay, the manned, I mean the maned duck. Another duck. I know a guy who likes ducks, so there's a lot of ducks in this game. Okay, tuck up to three bird cards from your hand behind this bird. If you tuck at least one bird card, you'll gain one seed from the supply. So this is letting you tuck up to three, which you might do on occasion, especially if you, have, if you have a lot of bird cards you're not going to use, or it's the end of the game and you have a bunch of bird cards you're not going to use. That could be useful, right? Especially if you're taking the action that lets you draw more bird cards. <laughs> but yeah, you might do that. And then, of course, if you do it at least one, you'll get one seed from the supply. That's a nice little bonus for sure. The Noisy Miner. Tuck one bird from your hand behind this bird. If you do, lay up to two eggs on this bird. All other players may lay one egg. So, this is something you might get to do quite a bit with this bird, but a maximum of probably three times unless you're using the eggs from this bird here to play birds in your aviary. But still, that's kind of a cool ability, and of course your, your opponents will like you too because they get to lay an egg as well. But you're also getting to t you also have to be able to tuck a bird card from your hand behind this bird. So if you don't have a bird card you don't want to tuck behind this bird, then obviously you're not going to get to use this ability. So it's still contingent on that, obviously. The sulfur crested cockatoo. Tuck a bird card from your hand behind this bird. If you do, all players gain one nectar from the supply. So yeah, you're getting the extra point. And then, of course, you're giving everyone a nectar, including yourself. So, you know, everyone's getting the same thing. But at least you're getting getting the extra point for doing so by tucking the bird behind, I mean, behind this bird, obviously, right? But, obviously, if you don't have a bird card you don't want to tuck, then you're not going to be doing this ability, obviously. 
Okay, the Major Mitchell's Cockatoo. Ooh, that one's beautiful. Tuck one bird card from your hand behind this bird. If you do, all players gain one seed from the supply. Well, it's the exact same one as the last one, except instead of nectar, it's a seed. The Cockatiel. Discard one seed to choose a bird card from the tray and tuck it behind this bird. So you'll have to discard a seed to do this, but then you'll get to tuck a bird of your choice from the tray. Cool. The Crimson Chat. This one, you'll discard one food of your choice to tuck one bird from the deck behind this bird. Well, that's pretty easy and straightforward. Discard any number of rodents to gain that many nectar from the supply. That's really cool. If you have a few extra rodents on hand, you can discard them with this ability and get that many nectar. Ho, 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 ho. Nectar is definitely a lot better than rodents. That's for sure. The Kelp Goal. Discard any number of food to draw that many cards. Hmm, might be useful. Uh, the Lesser Frigate Bird. Check out that. <laughs> I like that. All players may discard one egg from a wetlands bird, so a bird in your wetlands. Each player that discards an egg gains one food from the supply. Well, that's kind of interesting. This is, a, this is definitely an ability that affects all players, but if it's an ability you don't want to utilize, you can still activate it and let your opponents activate this ability if they want to discard an egg to gain one food from, food from the supply. If you want. You don't have to, but it's definitely an option, and uh, it's definitely a nice little interactive option for sure. Okay. The Rainbow Lorikeet. When activated... Discard one nectar to the spent nectar space for your forest. If you do, gain two food from the bird feeder. So gain two food dice from the bird feeder. That's cool, which is basically getting two food. Now, if you don't know what that is, the nectar space, it's uh, right here. So what you're just going to do is you're going to discard one nectar, and you're going to put it here to the spent nectar space on your forest, which is where I'm pointing. And then doing that is going to obviously help you get maybe some extra points at the end of the game because whoever has the most nectar in this location, as well as obviously this location here and this location here is going to get you some extra points at the end of the game, obviously. And so, you know, it's, you, it's definitely worth doing it's definitely worth doing, I would have to say. It's definitely worth it because you're getting two food back in its place and it's giving you a chance to get you maybe a possibility of more uh, nectar in that location. So that's definitely a good one to get. Okay, so this is a honey eater. A Rafaus Banded Honey Eater. Discard one invertebrate. If you do, gain one nectar from the supply. Huh. Ah, I like that one a lot. Uh, the horse fields bush lark. Discard one seed. If you do, lay up to two eggs on this bird. So if there's already an egg there, obviously, then you would still get to do one egg still. That's kind of cool. All right, so peaceful dove. Discard any number of seeds and then lay one egg on this bird for each discarded seed. Hmm, interesting. This could be a good way of getting a bunch of eggs uh, that you'll need to obviously put more birds in your aviary and maybe get rid of some seeds that you may not use anyway. Uh, some sort of species of parrot. I'm not going to try to pronounce the first part. Um, when activated, if the player to your right has a nectar in their personal supply, gain one nectar from the general supply. Well, that's interesting, and it's also contingent on your opponent. They have to, it has to be obviously a player to your right. They have to have a nectar in their personal supply. If they don't, obviously, then activating this ability isn't going to do you anything because they have to have a nectar in their personal supply. And it has to be the player to your right, right? And then if that's the case, though, you'll gain one from the general supply. So that's cool. I like that one. It's definitely interactive, right? Well, this one's similar to the last one. If the player to your left has a nectar, in their personal supply, gain one nectar from the general supply. So it's basically now left instead of right <laughs> for this one. <laughs> Another one I can't pronounce. Okay, the Australian zebra finch. 
If the player to your right has a seed in their personal supply, tuck a bird card from the deck behind this bird. So once again, another ability that's contingent on a player to your right, if they have a seed in their personal supply, you'll get to tuck a bird from the deck. That's cool. South Island Robin. If the player to your right has an invertebrate in their personal supply, cash one invertebrate from the general supply on this bird. Well, that's really cool. So another interactive one, obviously, another one that is contingent on what your opponent has. And then you get to cash one invertebrate on here. That's cool. Cashing food is a good way of doing it too. If the player to your left has an invertebrate in their personal supply, gain one uh, to uh, gain one invertebrate from the general supply. So this one is left. The last one was from right. So the South Island Robin was the player to your right. The red capped Robin is to your left, but the same ability nonetheless. The red necked Avocet. Avocet. I think that's how you pronounce that. Avocet. It's a wader bird or a shore bird, if you will. They got a nice long beak, and they use that beak to go into the shoreline, and go as far down as that, that beak can go, obviously, to get as many invertebrates as they can. So that's a really cool one. Cool bird. If the player to your left or or right, so this one is both left or right, same ability as the last one. Left or right, though. If the player to your left or right has an invertebrate in their personal supply, you'll gain one invertebrate from the general supply. That's cool. Another one just like the last two. Okay, so the Princess Stephanie's Astrafia. Strafia. Huh. Choose one other player. You both lay one egg. So if you're playing with more than one more than two players, you get to choose another player and you're both gonna get to lay an egg. Okay, the Broga. <laughs> so this is kind of like a stork, I think. Yeah, I think that's I think it's like Australia stork. I think. Um the Broga here. This one you'll choose one other player, then lay one egg. So you basically you're gonna choose another player you're both going to lay one egg and then you draw two cards so you get an additional benefit you get to draw two cards but you're choosing another uh, you're choosing one other player they lay one egg they they lay one egg so actually no sorry my bad choose one other player they get to lay an egg you don't get to lay an egg they do but then you instead get to draw two cards that's cool that's the broga okay the Australian Shoveler. Choose one other player. You both draw one card from the deck. Well, that's cool. Choose another player. You both get to draw one card from the deck. Cool. Okay, another one I'm not going to try to pronounce. Choose one other player. They reset the bird feeder and gain a seed if there is one. You tuck two cards from the deck behind this bird. Well, that's kind of an interesting one. Yeah, if they uh, if you activate this ability, they reset the bird feeder, and there's no seeds, then they don't get any. But you still get to tuck two birds from the deck behind this bird. So that's kind of interesting. But if there is, then they get a seed out of the, out of the deal. <laughs> okay, cool. So 50-50 maybe, right? So uh, Lewin's Honey Eater. Choose one other player. You both gain one nectar from the supply. Well, that's pretty simple and easy and straightforward. Cool. This one's just like the last one, except it's an invertebrate instead of a nectar. Uh, this one is just like the last one, except it's a seed instead of an invertebrate or a nectar. Uh, this one here, the bird of paradise here, has the exact same ability, except it's a fruit instead of, obviously, the other ones. Okay, the black-shouldered kite. When activated, reset the bird feeder and gain one rodent if there is one, you may give it to another player. If you do, lay up to three eggs on this bird. Well, that's interesting. So, obviously, you're resetting the bird feeder, and then you'll gain one rodent if there is one. And then, if there is one, you may give it to another player. If you do, you get to lay up to three eggs on this bird. Is it worth it? I would have to say yes. It is very worth it, for sure. I mean, in this game, there's nectar, so nectar is like the wild resource of the game, right? So, um, obviously, getting 
one uh, rodent and keeping it for yourself isn't going to be super helpful in comparison now that since we have all these nectar tokens right so that is definitely worth doing give that rodent to an opponent definitely i would do it and then get three get then you get to lay three eggs on this bird oh i would do it on a heartbeat although if there's no three eggs then i mean if there's already three eggs on this bird then obviously don't activate this ability is what i'll say the tawny frog mouth Ooh, i love this bird okay Reset the bird feeder. Cash one invertebrate or rodent from the bird feeder, if available, on this bird. Well, that's cool. So it's possible there's a good chance that you'll have at least one of these after you reset the bird feeder, and then you're going to get to cash it on this bird. Really cool. Ooh, the white-bellied sea eagle. Reset the bird feeder. Gain one fish or one rodent from the bird feeder, if there is one, and you'll cash it on this bird. So it's the same exact ability as the last one, except it's a fish instead of an invertebrate. But they both had the rodent on it. Okay, reset the bird feeder with this one, and gain all fish, if there are any, you may cash any or all of them on this bird. Well, that's interesting. It gives, it's giving you the option of of putting as many of, of the of the fish that you can gain, obviously, onto this bird. Uh, and then you get to cash it on this bird, and then the rest you get to keep. So it's your choice how many you're going to cash and how many you're going to keep. That's really cool. If you somehow manage to uh, reset the bird feeder and every single one is a fish, even better, right? That's five fish. Dude, that's cool. Uh, not likely to happen, of course, but still. The possibilities are definitely, it's definitely a possibility that could happen. That's the white-faced heron. Okay. With this one, you're going to reset the bird feeder and gain all rodents. If there are any, you may cash any or all of them on this bird. So it's the exact same ability as the last one, except it's, invert it's uh, rodents instead of fish. Okay. The black naughty. Reset the bird feeder and gain all fish, if there are any. You may discard any of these fish to tuck that many bird cards from the deck behind this bird instead. Well, that's interesting. So this one, you can either choose to get some fish, or you can choose to tuck some bird cards from the deck. Or kind of, uh, you know, 50-50, right? Some fish get to keep some bird cards I'm going to tuck. That's cool, but of course it's also contingent on how many possibilities of how many fish show up after the uh, bird feeder is reset. The Laughing Kookaburra. Oh, I love this one too. And it does laugh. I have heard it laugh. This bird can laugh, for sure. Okay, so, reset the bird feeder. If you do, gain one invertebrate, fish, or rodent if there is one. Well, that's cool. Okay, the White tailed eagle or the wedge-tailed eagle sorry the wedge-tailed eagle look at a bird card from the deck if its wingspan is 65 centimeters tuck it is over 65 centimeters tuck it behind this bird and cash one rodent from the supply on this bird if not discard it so that's cool this one this ability is like a lot of the abilities out there already in wingspan but instead of just simply tucking the bird card, you're also going to get to cash a rodent on this bird as well. So in a sense, it's possible you're going to get two points this way because you're, you're always going to get to cash one bird from the su supply. So that's cool. You're always going to get to cash one rodent. That's cool from the supply. That's really cool. Uh, so it's possible you'll get two points every time you do this because of that reasoning. Of course, if, you, if it's not that particular wingspan, then you get nothing at all. Still, that's really cool. I like that one a lot. Okay, so this one has the exact same ability as the last one, except the wingspan is obviously different. With this one, if its wingspan is less than 40 centimeters, then you'll get to tuck it behind this bird and cash one rodent from the supply on this bird. Okay? So it's the exact same ability, except it's got to be a less than 40 centimeters. Okay, the gray teal. We're almost done here. Look at all three bird cards from the deck. Um, keep one. Uh, keep one wetlands bird if there is one. 
You may add it to your hand or tuck it behind this bird. Discard the other cards. Look at all three bird cards from the deck. Um, I don't know why it says look at three. Oh, sorry, not all. Look at three. Sorry, I don't. I, it, it says look at three, so you'll get to look at three bird cards from the deck. You'll keep one if it's a wetland bird, if there is one. And then you can either choose to add it to your hand or tuck it behind this bird. Well, that's an interesting uh, choice. That's for sure. I don't know what I would go with on that one. The Rafaels Night Heron. Look at a bird card from the deck. If it can live in a wetlands, tuck it behind this bird. If not, discard it. Well, that's interesting and simple and straightforward. The Brown Falcon. Look at a bird card from the deck. If its food cost includes... An invertebrate or rodent, tuck it behind this bird. If not, discard it. Well, that's really cool, too. I like that one a lot. Okay, the little penguin. Ooh, we finally get a penguin in wingspan. It's about time. Okay, draw and discard five bird cards from the deck. For each fish in their food costs, cash one fish from the supply on this bird. Oh, that is cool. There's a possibility that you could get a lot of fish and get a lot and get to cash a lot of fish on this bird, on this little penguin. Oh, that is cool. That is a cool ability. I would love to get this one. If if possible, I would love to get this one in my aviary if it showed up. For more reasons than one, obviously. The Australian Ibis. Shuffle the discard pile, then draw two cards from it. Bird cards from it. Choose one. And tuck it behind this bird and add it or add it to your hand. So you'll shuffle the discard pile. So there might, there might be some birds in the discard pile. Well, there will most likely be birds in the discard pile, probably. And then uh, because the, you probably didn't keep all five cards when you started the game anyways. So there's guaranteed at least be one or two in the discard pile if this was like the first bird you played, which I seriously doubt. But then... You'll, so then you'll draw two cards from the discard pile after you've shuffled the discard pile. And you'll choose one and either tuck it uh, behind this bird or add it to your hand. Well, that's an interesting ability. That's an interesting thing, too. And You don't usually get to shuffle the discard pile in this game and draw cards from the discard pile. That's a different ability for sure. Okay, another one I can't pronounce, but isn't it, isn't it a beautiful bird? Very purplish for sure. Okay, this one's simple. Lay one egg on an adjacent bird. Well, me, adjacent means if this bird is here and this bird is down here. The emu here, it is not adjacent to this bird. So you can't lay one egg on the emu because it is not adjacent to this bird. This would be adjacent though. And this would be adjacent. This would be adjacent as well. And obviously, if the bird was here and the emu was over here, this is not adjacent to this bird. But that's basically what that ability means. Simple, right? Okay. The emu. Gain all seeds that are in the bird feeder. Keep half. Round it up. Then choose how to distribute the remainder among the other players. Okay, well, you'll gain um, all seeds that are in the bird feeder. So there could be a few, right? Maybe there's four. Keep half. Round it up. So maybe that means you get to keep two, right? Then you'll get to choose how the others get distributed. So if there's more than t two other players, then obviously uh, some players are not going to get the additional seeds if you're playing with, like, five players. That's still an interesting ability for sure. The mistletoe toe bird... Gain one fruit from the supply, or discard one fruit to gain one nectar from the supply. Well, that's interesting. So if you already have a fruit, you can gain one nectar from the supply. If you don't have a fruit, you can gain one fruit from the supply. That's kind of interesting. I like that. And then, of course, if you have one, you can still gain another fruit from the supply. The New Holland Honey Eater. Gain one nectar from the bird feeder if there is one. Well, that's straightforward and easy. The Eastern Rosella, that's one's, this one's beautiful, isn't it? All players gain one nectar from the supply. You also gain one seed from the supply as well. So everyone's going to get nectar with this one, but then you're also going to get a seed from the supply yourself. 
The red winged parrot. Give one nectar from your supply to another player. If you do, lay two eggs on this bird or gain two food from the bird feeder. Oh, that's totally worth doing. I would give a nectar in a heartbeat. Give a nectar, lay two, two uh, eggs on this bird or gain two food from the bird feeder. I would do that in a heartbeat. That's a good ability. The many colored fruit dove. All players gain one fruit from the supply. You gain one additional fruit from the supply. So everyone's going to get one fruit, from, one fruit from the supply, but you're getting two fruit from the supply. That is cool. That's a, definitely a cool ability. The silver eye. All players gain one nectar from the supply. That's easy enough. The superb lyre bird. Copy a brown power on one bird in the forest of the player to your right. Well, that's interesting. So it's contingent, obviously, on what your opponents have in their forest. And it's also contingent on who's to your right, obviously. And then you'll get to copy that power that they have. That's interesting. That's the super liar bird. It's going to tattletale on your opponents for sure. Okay, I'm not going to try to pronounce this one. But this one has the exact same ability as the other one, except it's the player to your left instead of your right. The Pink-Eared Duck. Draw two cards from the deck, keep one, and give the other to, the, to another player. Well, that's pretty easy and straightforward. And this one has the exact same ability as the last one. The Green Pygmy Goose has the exact same ability as the last one. And that is all of the birds from o Wingspan Oceana. That is all of the uh, when activated birds there are in this expansion. I tried to go through it as fast as possible, and frankly, I just barely went over 25 minutes. So I'm happy that that's about as far as I went. So if you guys watched this video all the way through, don't hesitate to leave a like. It'll help me out a lot, and don't forget to leave a like for the other videos. If you watched any of them and forgot to leave a like, that'd be nice too if you could leave a like on those videos. So thank you guys for watching. Um, I hope this uh, clears up uh, how some of these birds work. Hopefully, that's why I do this. You know, because maybe some of these birds may not be as easy to understand as others. Uh, obviously, some of them are super easy to understand, but some of these are definitely going to take a little bit more of a thinker. Uh, definitely going to take up some time uh, thinking about how they work. And if you want, and obviously it's good to know what these birds do before you, you know, obviously choose to add them to your aviary and stuff like that, right? It's good to know what the birds are going to do before you put them in your aviary, right? So anyways, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys again next time.